Good evening. I want to remind you that as we start our service today that uh, we hold our service in as a sacred observance. So we ask you to please turn off all other devices and cell phones that might uh, create feedback. Our written dialogue, we ask you to participate with us as we um, check and make sure we're going to unmute everyone at this time. And we'll unmute you at this time, then we'll mute you back out so that you can participate uh, in some of the dialogue today. Oh, listen, dialogue. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace not of evil, to give you a future and hope, people. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Let the wicked forsake their ways and their evil thoughts, people. Let them, Let them turn, to, turn the to the Lord, and he and will, he have, will mercy have mercy on them, on them. and, and to our God. God for he, for he will abundantly pardon. pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. He, he who forms the mountains, mountains creates the wind, and reveals his, his thoughts, thoughts to human, human beings. beings. He, he who, who turns dawn to darkness, darkness and treads the high places of the earth. Of the, earth. The, the Lord God, God Almighty is his, name. is his name. I appeal to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that all you agree with one another so that you may be perfectly united in deeds and thoughts. Let, Let us, us know the Lord, Lord our God and serve, and serve him, him with a perfect heart and, a willing and with a willing mind. For, For the, the Lord, Lord searches, searches all hearts, hearts and, and understands the imaginations of the, of the thoughts. thoughts. Commit your ways unto the Lord, and your thoughts shall be established. Glory, Glory to the to Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy, to the Holy Spirit, 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 as, as it was in the, the beginning, is now, now and, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Welcome this evening to our service for this the Lenten service of the week. We bring you greetings from Grace Lutheran Church. We bring you the power of God's spirit. For the love of God is poured into our hearts and the saving grace of Jesus Christ and the abundant life of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. The Old Testament reading, the Old and chapter two. Yet even now declares the Lord, return to me with your heart and fasting with weeping and with mourning and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Show no anger and accountable and steadfast love, and he revents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering to the Lord, your God. Blow the trumpet to Zion, and consecrate the feast, and call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room, and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest 
the minister of the Lord, weep and say, spare your people, O Lord, and make me not your carrier a reproach. A byword among the nations, why should they say among the people, where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. Here in the reading. Let's pray for the hope of God and Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy. This time we want to say, especially we want to pray for, for Ukraine, we want to pray for America, we want to pray for Great Britain, we pray for all people everywhere as we cope with, as we cope with those things that this world is preventing us to at this time. Let us pray. Oh God, rich in mercy, full of kindness, out of your great love, raise up us from sin and death. Make us alive together with Christ. And write your words upon our hearts and restore in us the image of your love, that by your spirit, our way of life may become the way of Christ, to whom we pray and have hope. Amen. Amen. Don't have to read about gospel lesson. The gospel reading, Matthew 27. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. And he said, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. End of the reading. <laughs> Let us all say amen. Let us pray. Holy God, Lord, we ask you to bless us tonight. Strengthen us tonight. Enliven us tonight. So the words of our mouths and meditation of our hearts will be acceptable to you of what we do and say one to another. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, we have hope. Amen. Amen. 
I want to share with you this evening that you might share with me and your thoughts. I want to talk about the shouting crowd that would have been all around Jesus on that day. Listen to a portion of the scripture that we might focus. Meanwhile, the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for the release of Barabbas so that they have Jesus put to death. So when Pilate asked, which of the two do you wish me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. And Pilate said, well then, what am I to do with Jesus called the Messiah? The crowd with one voice answered, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said, why? What harm has he done? They shouted louder, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. See, that's how it happened when two prisoners were put side by side for a boat and Jesus lost. Some say that, that majority rules. So then if the majority is for it, it must be right, right? It seems as if it was safer for Pilate to go along with the crowd than to take a stand on principles. And we know he washed his hands or tried to of the whole thing. Now, now, now a few days before that, this might not, this might have been harder for Pilate to do. See, that's when the processional moved through the streets of Jerusalem and the crowd went wild with excitement shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna in the highest. Now, Hosanna was a Hebrew cry for deliverance. It meant save us, we pray. And many were sure that Jesus was the one that lead them into rebellion. And did you know that the feast of the Passover meant that the influx of people, according to Josephus the historian, expanded to 2,700,000 people in little small Jerusalem. You know, most folk, folk held a deep conviction in those days. In the city of David, Jerusalem, was the place they went to to worship. And, and it was a testimony to the Roman soldier's skill of administration as well. For years, Judea had managed to avert any serious problems at any festivals. I mean, even after triumphant interest, entrance, when, when folks sang, sang Hosanna, Hosanna the highest, Jesus was the most popular person in the town. Ah, uh, but a popular person is untouchable as long as their popularity lasts. They're shielded by their acclamation. In fact, this is the first day of Jesus. The mob would have benched anyone who would dare to suggest that he be crucified. But on this day, when most of the people were there as observers to see what he would do, I mean, now, Jesus had this kind of elevated popularity since his ministry. Remember, he was asked to demonstrate his uniqueness by turning stones into bread. He was asked to jump off the height of the temple. And once his very life was threatened, but he walked away unharmed. I mean, with this kind of public opinion on your side, who could, 
who could I blame Jesus if he would just tone it down a little bit? Ah, but what a mighty savior we serve. Because in obedience, he warns disciples that he was going to Jerusalem to die. You know, now most visitors who came during this time, they were expected to come in on foot. But Jesus chose to ride in on an animal of profound importance and significance, a coat, a donkey. That was not a horse of war. No, it was a symbolic and sacred animal which was thought that the Messiah would appear on. So I suspect this deliberate gesture was intended to show the people and tell the people that he was the promised Messiah coming to bring peace. Peace, 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 not war. Can you imagine him riding through the praising crowds, right into the temple to overthrow the table of the profiteers? Now, Jesus never said a word about the Romans, but to those who took the house of the Lord in vain, he had words of indignation to them. Now, maybe, maybe that's why folk turned against him. In him, everything looked so hopeful. To some, he was a disappointment. And so the Jewish leaders were, were really quick to use the custom of releasing a prisoner of Passover. Now, now, Barabbas, he had been imprisoned for his part in uprising against the Romans. He was a murderer. It was clear that if given release, he would show no mercy to his enemy. And the picture is, can you picture this? Can you imagine the gentle appeal of Jesus who had said, love your enemies and pray for your persecutors, standing beside the rabbis. Then what am I to do with Jesus? Pilate asked. Give us Barabbas, they shouted. And with one loud voice, they said, crucify him, crucify him. Now, you know and I know crowd behavior is fascinating. It's a fascinating thing and we have experienced more crowd action than any previous generation within the last year or so. Whether in a church or in the streets, nothing draws like a crowd. It creates excitement. A large congregation is inspiring to both the worshiper and the preacher. We have to ask, what have churches done with crowds they once had years past? And what we need to do to get crowds to return is today's challenge. And I'm convinced, brothers and sisters, that sometimes church churchgoers do not understand how much their absence curtails the witness of the congregation. But a crowd guarantees the measure of certain success. But on frequent occasions, the minority is not always silent. But I pray that we will keep in our prayers, in your prayers, the people of Ukraine and those in Russia who dare to ask why and what of this war. My, how quickly hopes and dreams can evaporate. For sure it was a crowd, like every crowd, prone to idleness, idleness that sent Jesus to the cross. You see, the, the gospel tells us that Jesus was frequently in crowds. 
He spoke in the midst of great crowds with compassion. He showed the capacity even, and the leadership even, by organizing thousands and thousands of people so that everyone got fed on a mountainside. On one occasion, Jesus saw a great crowd and his heart went out to them because they were sheep. They looked like sheep without a shepherd. I say to you tonight that his understanding was the same then as now. It's the same as when he heard the shouts of crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, that his heart went out to those who were irresponsible in that crowd. So our Lord prayed for forgiveness, for ignorance, and what about us in our day and age? It seems like to me that people are beginning to care more than ever about what they regard as evil in today's world. People are venting the shame they feel. People are sick of so-called justified wars. People are sick of nuclear stockpiling. People are sick of racial injustice, of hate and inequity. People are sick of unequal pay for women. People are sick of division between have and have nots. People are sick of pollution of land and sea in the atmosphere. And most of all, people are sick of the pollution of minds by verbal and literal bigotry. So I stopped by to tell you that we who live and worship on this side of the cross that the Christ of God has the same compassion for you and for me as he had for that crowd that day. In spite of our progress towards peace and racial harmony and social justice, we're still finding it hard to love individuals. I am praying that our world does not become increasingly more impersonal and insensitive. Nowhere is an individual more lonely than in a crowd. You know, I was thinking, who, who could tell the amount of loneliness in a crowd during the lunch hour at a restaurant? And then I thought about something, Jesus can. Even over a shouting crowd, Jesus knows our loneliness. Once when a woman touched his cloak, his disciples thought it was odd that he should even ask, who touched me? But it was different, for her church was of great need and urgency. It, it, it was in a crowd that he noticed a man sitting up in a tree. He heard the cry in the plea of a leopard far off, a blind man by the road, and all the other times. Why could he see? Why could he respond? Because he is, he was the Christ of God. And he never would let a person get lost in a crowd or shrink from his responsibility. I just wanted to tell you as we get closer to our salvation, whether in a city, on a road, on the lake, at home, or in a village, Jesus can hear your call over and beyond the shouts of the crowd, whether they're derogatory, cruel, or insensitive. The Lord was and is the only one who can who could, who will love them, love you, and all who call upon his name. On that night, they gave the verdict against him, yet he went all the way to save them and to save you. You know what? He did it all without saying a mumbling word. What a mighty Lord we serve. Amen.
the prayers of the people. Whenever we are tempted to excel, our own importance to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, fix our fix thoughts our on you. Grant us measure of our own humility that we may be more anxious to serve than to be satisfied, more ready to give than to want. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, fix, fix our, our thoughts, thoughts on you. In our want and weakness, to give us your strength, that we may lean on you with firmly trusting faith. Lord, Lord Jesus, speak to our thoughts. Thank you. Grant that with wholesome words and loving deeds. We praise you always as our gracious King. Lord, Lord Jesus, speak to our thoughts. Thank you. And when at least you come again in triumph to deliver us from every evil to our Father's waiting arms. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, fix our thoughts on you. Amen. Amen. Now, if you'll join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass. Us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For nine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. glory. Amen. Amen. Then I will extol the Lord at times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will host the Lord. Let the people hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. He answered me. He delivered me from my fears. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his trouble. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all my sin and heals my disease. He redeems my life from the pit and crowns me with love and compassion. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abiding to love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our inner qualities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, as far as he removed our transgressions from us. How can I repay the Lord for all the goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the same of the Lord. I will sacrifice my thanks often to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all the people in the courts of the house of the Lord in your midst, O Jerusalem. Amazing grace. Amazing
We want to thank you for this evening and ask you to take a moment and say hey to one another. You can unmute and say hi and welcome each other. And we invite you to know that we worship on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We invite you to come and be here with us uh, and share that time with us. Uh, the peace of the Lord be with you all. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks. You may talk to each other. <laughs> Hi, everyone.